Hi, it's Sister Walker here with your lesson for this week. And I thought I'd do it in a different room because I really like the temple in the back. And I thought this could show you more. Let's see that get the Christ on there. Plus, I wanted to show you that I really have been making cookies, although can't eat them today because it's the special fast for the whole world. And so they're just going to sit there to remind us that we have a purpose for this fast so it won't be a temptation for us. But in two weeks, I'll be back again with another lesson because next week, remember, it's general conference. We've been waiting for it. We're so excited for this. Um, you need to remember to tune in on Saturday, 9 a.m., and then again at 1 p.m., and then do it again on Sunday because our prophet's going to talk to us. It's going to be very different not having – I heard that the Tabernacle Choir is pre-recorded because they can't have too many people in there. So this will be very, very interesting. Kind of exciting. Kind of like an adventure. Anyway, let's get to the lesson. Today we're doing Enos all the way through Words of Mormon. I'm going to show you a picture here. There's Enos praying. I want to describe to me what kind of phrases and title you would give this picture. Looking at it. It's a very Beautiful picture. I was thinking about as he was outside in nature, I thought wow, that is just such a place to really find a closeness to God. Yesterday I just got antsy. I needed to go outside because we finally had sunshine. I'm, I'm a sunny girl, not so much a rainy day girl. But um, So I went outside, drug Emily out with me, and we've been weeding some areas because I want to put in some flowers. Because I think flowers is true. That's why I'm wearing my... Favorite flower dress. See? Yeah, I like flowers. So we're getting there. I thought about the allegory of the olive tree that we did last week and all the work that goes in it. And even though it was a lot of work, it's going to pay off because we're going to have some really beautiful flowers out there. I should have taken a before and after picture. That's what I should always do, but I always forget. Anyway, I thought about Enos out there. And do you have a place that you like to go pray? Think about Joseph Smith went to the Sacred Grove, which is if you have ever been there, if you haven't been there, you can go vicariously through YouTube anywhere in the world. Then there's a new video out that I know has been showing since it's 200 years since the first vision. I thought about, we all have kind of like different places. I really have my quiet room. I have, I can't tell anybody where it is and I'll know where it is. I have this quiet room. You know, some people like outside, but I have this quiet room that nobody ever knows I'm even then in there. I just go in there and close the door and I can say prayers. And so you need to find a place, pick your own girl, pick your own sacred area that you want to pray. And Enos didn't really go out there to pray. He just kind of was out there doing his thing. He liked to do hunt beast. So that's kind of an interesting thing that was about him. He uh, loved nature, but what I liked is how he starts out his book. And this is in Enos chapter well, there's only one chapter. Verse one. Behold, it came to pass that I, Enos, know Enos, knowing my father. I want you to pay attention to this. He knows his father. He's very close to his father. That he was a just man. For he taught me in his language. And also in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Then he goes down to verse three. And he says, I had often heard my father speak concerning eternal life and the joy of the saints. And this like deep in my heart. Do you have a relationship with your, I should have a picture of my father up here because I have a really close relationship with my father because I lost my mother at such a young age. She passed away when I was 12, who I was very, very close to. And then after losing her, I then became very close to my father. And I think about some of my advice that my father gave me in our relationship. What I'd like you to do is write down, whether it's your mother or your father, because I know sometimes we have a close relationship or we only have one parent, or maybe we don't have a parent, maybe we have a grandparent, but someone that you're close to, that write down the influence that they've had on you. Uh, uh, for example, I always say a good cook is a clean cook. My kids can always say it because my mom always did that. Uh, my dad always would say, where there's a will, there's a way. There's just different things that I wrote down that my father's been a great influence on me or my mother's been a great one. And I would like you to write that in your journals. Remember, I gave you a journal to write down. As you're reading, this will make it more meaningful. So be sure to write those down. So if you want to stop right now and come back and watch me, I understand. 
And then the next thing we learn about Enos is how he wouldn't have known. He wanted to get a testimony of this himself. So how can you gain that testimony? Well, you look through that chapter and you're going to read so many things that help you how to gain a testimony. Why don't you just skip to verse 8? Verse 8 says, And he said unto me, Because of thy faith in Christ. I think it's one of the first things you got to have. Is you just got to have faith that it's going to come to be. President Nelson has told us, if you want to learn for yourself, first pick a place. So we talked about that. Next, you got to have a desire to pour it out. You really got to have that desire. And you got to pour out your soul, exactly what you're feeling and thinking, and ask. And I want you to show you this little seed. I don't know if you can see this, how tiny that is. Can you see that? It's a mustard seed. Look how tiny that is. I don't even, I should have put it on flyers. Then I can get it right there. There we go. You can see how tiny that is. The mustard seed is one of the smallest of all seeds that grows into, some people say it's a bush, some say it's a tree, but it's what we make our prepared mustard that we put on our hot dogs and hamburgers and different things and different meals. But it starts out very tiny. And if it's cared for, it grows. And that's how your faith can be, like that mustard seed. What I want you to go to now is on verse 5. We're going to kind of go backwards. And it says, And there came a voice unto me, saying, Enos, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou shalt be blessed. He was listening. He heard that. Sometimes it will come in a still small voice. Sometimes a loud voice. Sometimes by an action of somebody else. It can come in so many different ways. Comment below to me some of the ways that you've received answers. I would like to know, and I'm sure everyone else here would like to know some of the ways that you've received an answer. The big thing is you need to be listening. So please, right now, comment below how you received an answer. Because you were listening, you noticed it, that tender mercy thing. Let's skip to verse 11 now. Here's that word again. And after I, Enos, had heard these words, my faith began to be unshaken. You know what unshaken means now to have that faith. There's a little meme going around right now. It says the, the little virus can, if a little virus can cause a pandemonium, what can the faith the size of a mustard seed cause? <coughs> Excuse me. So that shows us right there that we can do a lot with this. It's all worldwide faith that we're having right now. Now we're going to skip to verse 17. And it says, I mean us knew that it would be according to the covenant which he had made, wherefore my soul did rest. I love that word rest. He does it again in verse 27. <coughs> no, I do not have the coronavirus. I have a dry mouth because I'm fasting. Um, and I soon go to the place of my rest, which is my redeemer. So you find rest in your redeemer. That's where the rest is. The next part we're going to just skip pretty fast because Jerem... Through Jen and Omni, we go through a lot, a lot of prophets in such short, 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 short books. But one thing I want to point out about Jerem that it lists about him is that he basically gave the most important thing he said was the plan of salvation. And we'll talk about that more as the Book of Mormon unfolds because that plan of happiness is given to us over and over again in more detail in the Book of Mormon. So that he says that that's one of the most important things. And I love um, verse 3. I underlined, these are my favorite scriptures, like I told you, they're big ones, but God is exceedingly merciful unto them. I feel like he's merciful unto all of us. We need to recognize that. Um, recently, I want you to think about some church leader that's influenced you, that's inspired you, especially with conference commitment. There's got to be one that you're like setting up like, oh, I want to hear this person. So that's one thing I'm going to challenge you is to listen to conference or even a recent one that comes out in the new era or Ensign or friend, a talk or something that has inspired you to be better. Omni, not such a great person, uh, but he did keep the records, which the records are very, very important, as we know, because Lehi sent his sons back to get the records. And then he, they always have to keep that record and pass it down. But what I like about Omni is he gives us a story of Messiah because that can be kind of a little confusing. Like, where did Sarah Hemla come from? But you have to remember, the Mulekites came over during the Tower of Babel. That's that big tower they built, tried to get to God, and then they were language confounded. Well, the Mulekites came over here. Mulek was a son of Zedekiah, who was the king at that time, and he's later destroyed that we tell Lehi knows he's going to be destroyed. 
And so we hear there's it's now it's all starting to come together. Now you kind of see these little parts. So the Mulekites, and that's where the Messiah comes from, and Zarahemla. But they also have um, met Coriantumr, who is the last of the Jaredites who came from that same time too. So we have the son of Zedekiah, which is the Mulek, Mulekites. And then we have the Jaredites who were from the Tower of Babel. We've got all these people. They don't even know they're all on the same continent here. But they all seem to gather at Zarahemla. So we look at verse 25 and 26 of Omni. What I love about this is that they point out in 25 towards the bottom, go down to the bottom, 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 bottom. It says, nothing which is good, save it comes from the Lord, and that which is evil cometh from the devil. Remember that everything that's good comes from the Lord. Everything evil comes from the devil. So I love that he sums that up, and he tells them in verse 26, he said, come unto Christ. They always end at that with come unto Christ. I love that. Words of Mormon. Now, you need to understand Mormon is abridging this whole Book of Mormon. He's putting it all together, putting all these plates. And he, in verse 7, he says, um, well, before that, he talks, uh, I want to, before he goes to verse 7, let's go to verse 2. He says, the coming of Christ, somewhat concerning Christ, and then you skip to 4, coming of Christ. He talks all, all about Christ. How can you not deny that this is another, another testament of Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon? That was his sole purpose of putting it together. But now, on to verse 7. He was looking and he saw two plates, which Nephi back in um, 1 Nephi 9, 5 said, I don't know why I do this. Let me see if I can go back there really fast. Um, he's putting the plates together and he decides to do two records. And in verse, chapter 9, verse 5, he says, Wherefore the Lord hath commanded me to make these plates for a wise purpose in him which purpose I know not. Then you go to Morona, I mean to uh, Mormon, and he says in verse seven, and I do this for a wise purpose, for this purpose, for thus it whispereth me according to the workings of the spirit of the Lord, which is in me. And now I do not know all things, but the Lord knoweth all things. God knew what was gonna happen. So if you know your church history, when it was first translated, the large plates, it was mostly uh, historical with a little bit of spiritual into it. Those 116 pages, Martin Harris begged off Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith gave in finally, even though he wasn't supposed to. Martin ends up losing a will. We suspect that his wife took them, and we suspect they fell into the hands of wrong men at, or women at that time that were going to discredit Joseph Smith, which he's told in Doctrine and Covenants chapter, section 10. You can read about that in section 10. They said that they were going to discredit him. And so he was not to translate over again. But the smaller plates were there. It was more of a spiritual, which is actually being a blessing for us. It's the same type of history, but it's more the spiritual side. So because of that following Nephi and Mormon following those two things, many, many lives have been blessed because of this. So here's my challenge to you as we go into conference. I want you to listen to the apostles. And listen to, especially one of the 12 apostles, how they each bear witness of Christ. That's their calling is to be special witness of Christ. So I want you to be listening for that. Um, there's a story told of in Samoa where the little children wanted to shake the hands of the prophet. When he got there, President Monson, he just didn't have time. But the teacher had told them, if you have faith and you pray really hard, the prophet will shake your hand. Well, he said he just didn't have time, but he kept getting this impression. This is President Monson saying, I kept getting the impression to shake the hands of the children of a Sunday school class. And so he shook their hands. What faith those children had to pray for that because he said he didn't have time. They kept stopping him and he thought, no, I have to do that. Uh, the other story I want to comment as you're listening to the apostles. I was alive during this time with President Bruce R. McConkie. He was very sick. I think he had cancer, if I remember right. But he wrote a poem called I Believe in Christ, which is later made into a hymn. So I'll play that at the end of this and called I Believe in Christ. And so he literally listened to his testimony. He knew he was going to meet his maker and how he cried out about Christ. That's another beautiful story. The third story I want to finish up with is about Brother Millet and Brother Hall. 
Brother Millet was uh, going through some really tough times and didn't have enough flour. His children, they were basically starving. And he sought very various places to get it, but couldn't get it. And Brother Hall had some extra fun for some reason. Not that he had a whole lot, but he had some and he felt prompted to give it to Brother Miller. He didn't know why. And Brother Miller had been praying and crying out for this. And Brother Hall said, I don't, I don't know why, but I need to give you this um, flower. And I see that happening today with this pandemic going on. There's been many people that I've reached out to. They said, I'm low on this. They've shared with what they have. I've bartered some things with them. Or somebody else needs this. And I said, I'm happy to share. I have extra. Somehow I ended up with extra of that. So I, that's my third challenge. You see, you got three challenges going on. First is the prayer. Next is to listen to the apostles or witnesses of Christ. And the third is to actually listen to the spirit whispering to who needs you at this time and answer those. You might be the tender mercy in their life. And I leave this lesson with you. And I hope it works through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And maybe we'll see you in two weeks. Who knows? And until then, enjoy conference and enjoy the rest of the fasting today. You never know if a cookie angel might stop by. So be in your fast and find cookies on your doorstep. You know. Bye. Have a very restful Sabbath. Oh, wait. Oh, got to push. <laughs> I was trying to push like my phone. Ah. <sighs>